How did you screw with computers at school? Took the Windows startup sound. Edited in 8 minutes of dead air. Edited in 15 seconds of SX noises. Made that the new startup sound. Used an altered version of a JavaScript web browser hack that turns all pictures shown into pictures of French toast. Rotated monitors 90 degrees in graphics card settings. I did this a lot at primary school till my teachers sat me down for hacking the system and I was almost suspended. Not me. But I remember at my old school someone managed to disable the H key on lots of the computers. If you were typing and tried to press H you would get an error message saying like sorry but the H key on this computer is currently disabled. Please try again later. It may have just been an auto hotkey script so that when they pressed H it immediately pressed backspace to delete the H and then executed a tiny bat script to display a pop up with that dialogue. Edit. Got it everyone. You don't have to delete the H after it's pressed because auto hotkey intercepts it before it's typed. Thank you. Control plus alt plus direction arrow to flip the screen's different directions. I stopped when I was told that could permanently mess up the computers. I started again in college. Edit. I did this to a friend and she didn't know how to undo it so she turned her laptop sideways to google how to fix it. I did that in grade school. They had to pay a computer technician to come in. He said that there was a virus. It wasn't fixable. And left. I flipped it back the next day. Unplug mouse from back of computers 1 and 2. Switch the plugs. But leave the mice where they were. Mouse in front of computer 1 is now plugged into computer 2 and vice versa. Watch the hilarity ensue. I straight up got detention for that once. Some BS. It. The dicks that provide me with job security. We would take a screenshot of the desktop as it is. Then delete all the icons off the desktop. And then make the screenshot we took the wallpaper. Watch people futilely click on the wallpaper. And enjoy. Edit. Something else we'd try on occasion. Since we were in graphic design class and had access to the necessary programs, besides paint, was create fake windows warning dialog boxes. We'd make them say things like. Delete computer. Comma. Delete hard drive. Comma. Or something else totally obnoxious like that. Then we'd just remove the no option or make both the options say yes. When it was done we'd add it to the wallpaper that's already on the computer. So that it looks like it's a real dialog box that's popped up on the screen. This only worked once or twice that I remember. I think we fooled the programming teacher who was really just the baseball coach teaching a class in order to remain as the coach. It's harder to get someone with this one. But it's equally funny. Our school had a standard wrong password 3 times lockout rule. Given the IT teacher was a stone's throw from retirement. He wasn't the quickest. Our school network ran on windows for work groups 3. 0. Machines were locked down so you couldn't run your own programs on them. However we discovered if you put a modified win. Any file that allowed you to install your own programs in a network drive that came before where the lockdown version was stored it would use that and you could install stuff. And that was my first introduction to Doom Multiplayer. Somebody threw a Molotov cocktail into the window of a computer lab at my school. It was over a weekend. Thankfully. So nobody was there. But it destroyed all of the computers in the room. My friend and I got blamed for it because the teacher whose lab it was thought we didn't like her, which we didn't. Thankfully our alibi was that we were on a plane flying back from a school exchange trip to Belgium when the damage occurred. There were several teachers on the flight to corroborate our story. That. And. You know. Plane tickets. Should have had a better firewall. Back when the mice had balls. We remove the balls and leave the rest of the mouse. Side note. Does this count as neutering computer mice? Soundboards. Holy shit, we were little demons in middle school with those things. My personal favorites were either Arnold Schwarzenegger or Pulp Fiction. And the teacher would ask if there any questions. From the back of the class you would hear in a thunderous voice. 
WHO is your daddy and what does he do? Followed by an eruption of laughter. Also following up any time the teacher said. That's correct with. Correct Amundo. If you're reading this M's. Jadish I'm so sorry. Edit. Oh yeah almost forgot. Some kid found a way to print from all of the printers in the school from one computer. So naturally someone printed 800 copies of a piece of shti to all the computers in the school. Twas known as Brown Tuesday. <laughs> Nothing malicious. Really. Just bypassing the security BS and playing a little lot of Starcraft. Alright he was shti at our school. If you knew the specific computer number you could make it shut down only using the Windows command. Eggs. The staff stopped setting the fun in it when we found the principal's computer number. I just put a bunch of strange messages in auto exec. Bat. Every time the thing would boot up. Do not look behind you. Or the package has been delivered. It's in locker number, of unused locker, or something like it would pop up. On startup. Run paint. On open paint. Open paint renders the computer unusable. When I first started working in computers we edited auto exec. Bat for a co-worker named Greg. If login name is Greg logout. Hilarity ensues. This probably shows my age but. We'd open basic and write a little program that went something like this. 10 LPRINT you suck. 20 go to 10. Then we'd edit the shortcut to a popular program. Same as word. To link to this program instead. When an unsuspecting user clicked to open what they thought was a legit program. Instead they'd be treated to the dot matrix printer screeching out you suck. You suck. You suck. Forever. Only way to stop it was to find and terminate the program. Powering down the printer and turning it back on again wouldn't do it. I did something similar. I wrote a batch script that echo L. PRN in a loop with a wait command on a computer in the back of the lab without a monitor. The printer spit out a blank page every 5 minutes for the whole year and they never figured it out. They even replaced the printer thinking it was defective. They finally just assigned someone at the beginning of each period to take it from the tray and put it back in the printer. Me and a friend replaced how CS stitches my computer icon with a shutdown shortcut. Displaying a muahaha message for 3 seconds turning of the computer. She clicked it 3 times. Wasn't really the sharpest arrow in the quiver. Not me but some guy has been updating a games folder on the school's public H drive. None of the teachers or tech supports guys can get rid of it or set it up so we can't use it. No one knows where it came from except it's been there since forever. It has counter strike 1. 6. Day of defeat. Halo CE. A Halo odd simulator. It actually works. I too have questions. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Team Fortress Classic. Doom. Kota. Minecraft. Old School RuneScape. ES. More Rewind and a few others. Edit. Like a lot of people asked. I went and looked at the games folder to try to copy it. Much to my dismay, and others, the folder is now almost all gutted excluding a proxy program. Halo CE. Undertale. And Counter Strike 1. 6. I did not deliver since I don't think those games are why some people wanted a dropbox of the file. Sorry you guys. Not sure what happened but I'm just as bummed as you are. In 1998 this idiot brought like 5 PRN pictures on a floppy disk and decided to open them in computer class. Suspended on the spot. I have no idea what the FCK he expected to happen. Guess he was thinking with his hard drive not his floppy disk if you know what I'm saying. Shift plus print screen to capture desktop open paint control plus V rotate image upside down and save set image as desktop background auto high task bar on desktop. Moved all of the abacus beads to one side. I'm older than most redditors. When I went to school. Electricity wasn't invented yet. We used candles to watch TV. I would always switch the buttons on the keyboards to spell dick or something lol. In 5th grade I found out you could set words to autocorrect to whatever you want in Ms. Word. 
Then word got out and suddenly half of the words you typed on any computer would autocorrect and I love dicks in my butt lololo. The teachers were horrified. Edit. I went to school with you crazy Cooper. Nicholas Cage Chrome extension. My school had one of those annoying monitoring programs so the librarian could quickly see what you were doing and take control. And usually the ass would just turn the computer off. Someone found out then when she started watching a small square appeared in the top left corner of the screen. If you right click this square you could reverse the control and take her computer over. Someone took over and rather quickly hit delete on the windows folder. It didn't work but it helped stop the overbearing watchful eye of the shtty librarian. Just imagine her facial expressions when she noticed her computer being possessed. I would always take the little ball out of the bottoms of the mice. Guaranteed an afternoon of entertainment every time. Now you have to put tape over the laser. Windows NT allowed you to specify the network name and we were allowed to change it on the login prompt. I replaced an E with a special character on the best computer in the lab. Effectively making it my computer. We pretty much ran the network. It was up or down at our whim. The entire network used hubs. And this was right as routers were becoming a thing so they were not yet economical. We would shut down the entire network with a repeating ping command in DOS set to max packet size. It was far too simple. We wouldn't usually do it for long. Just enough for everyone to think it was a hiccup. And to see if we could. Our computer class was actually really awesome. The assigned modules were easy. And once we were finished our teacher would let us do our own thing. Turns out. Our school had an entire computer graveyard. We would go in there. Find parts. And build entire computers. Eventually we had a separate network of 8 or 10 machines that we used exclusively for Quake 2 and the original Halo. One day the school came in and removed our separate gaming computers. We were pissed. The network was down for quite a while. Edit. Wording. I changed the screensaver from liberal arts to liberal farts. I never did anything to damage computers. Just circumvent security measures. Using standalone browsers or games from a flash drive. Using said browsers and or proxies to get around web filters. Installing programs games in the C root directory since most group policy or other security measures wouldn't stop something from executing from there. Etc. So computer class for most of grade school was nothing more than endless typing classes. She sells seashells by the seashore and other tongue twisters to get us practicing home rows and typing quickly. Absolutely mind numbingly dull. Sure. Getting to play Commander Kino Wolfenstein after was nice. But the reward was nowhere near worth the effort to reach it. And the teacher would constantly get frustrated with me ditching homerals and finishing faster and accurately without them. So one day. With us both being frustrated with each other. I restarted the computer and opened the BIOS setup utility and started changing random settings to random values. Child me was vindictive. Yeah I was a typing pro due to my online gaming habits back in middle school, Starcraft, Diablo 2, Warcraft 3 and whatnot. I convinced my teacher that if I could accurately finish the entire course curriculum in 4 classes then I could play Oregon Trail for the rest of the year. A lot of settlers died from dysentery that semester. Finally. I can contribute. I was in college. In a classroom. Waiting my turn to an exam. Which was held in another room. Bored out of my mind. Behind me was a PC. I saw a red button that said 220. I say out loud what does this button do? And turn the button. The button now says 150 and a loud bang and smoke comes from inside the PC unit. I turned the power supply unit from 220V to 150V. Which toasted it. The room was full with my colleagues. Everybody looks at me in disbelief. I begin to laugh out loud. Not believing what just happened. Luckily. Nobody told on me to the professor. Which was a difficult guy. We figured out we could make the computer sound like chainsaws by putting a handful of quarters into the CD drive. Then we did it a lot. 
that just sounds like vandalism. To the dumbass student who tried to mess with the school computer by shoving paper into the CD tray. Don't use paper with your class schedule. Full name. And I'd number on it. Dumbass. Not school. But many years ago when I was a hapless little shti I was walking by a couple of computers in one of those we sell anything cheap stores. There was one on an end cap it was running 95 or 3. 1. Can't remember. So I logged out. Opened DOS and set format C. And walked away. I'm sure I've paid for it over the years in karma. We installed Unreal Tournament on M and played every recess. Our game programming teacher installed Unreal Tournament on our PCs and we'd play that and the guise of doing research. Hell. You could get away with playing any game as long as it was research. A kid would play Slender almost every day and I remember us playing at Tron Ripoff when we got bored of Unreal. One day in junior high we stole all of the mouse balls from all the mice in the computer lab. This was before the laser ones. Literally every single one. The school's solution after this was to super glue the covers on. So you physically can't remove them. This was a problem though. Because with those type of mice you do have to clean the little ball sockets from time to time. But with the covers super glued on. That was no longer possible. So eventually all the mice became really crappy and almost unusable. Computers were all on the same network. Big school. 2800 students, approx 150 computers on it including faculty computers. We learned the ability to use Nets and Lab 208 or whatever computer a friend was on and we could send messages, basically texting, this evolved to we could cheat on certain tests for some of our classes. Never got caught. But near the end of the year, the drafting and design teacher was doing a presentation to about 150 students and someone sent a message to her computer. It popped up on her screen. I wasn't a part of the presentation, I was told the message was harmless. But after that the network admins changed some settings and we weren't able to do it anymore. Was a good run though. Also. Removing the trackballs from the mice. When I wasn't doing work. I was playing Final Fantasy V on a SNES emulator. It was my small payback for removing the seniors can leave early if they have number 7th period class option. A couple Chinese kids at my school changed the default language on each computer to Chinese. Sorry in advance for mediocre English. It's my third language. I think it was in 2004. My IT teacher let me use an old laptop for a project. Inside it was a floppy disk with the username and password for all users on the learning platform we used. Including teachers. The rest of the semester I logged into the teachers accounts. Found the hand-ins from the best students. Downloaded. Made it my own and handed it in from my own account. Never got busted. But I realized I used almost the same time altering assignments as I would have if I just made my own. Also had some fun with the left rule Trojan from time to time. At my old school. Students had access to command prompt. It made for a lot of fun times. I think my favorite was when someone made a fake Google Chrome shortcut that would open infinite windows until the computer crashed. And then replaced real Chrome with it on multiple computers. Put a space in the password text box so when you try to log in there is an incorrect space and the password returns wrong. Changing the startup sound was locked down. But I was able to overwrite the sound file itself with the South Park opening song. You people are what prevents me from being able to finish my coffee in the morning. Damn you all. Admittedly. I sometimes go into web browsers on random computers while other students are away and change the default search engine to Bing. You're the real monster. 10 print Kurt Ludwig is awesome. 20 go to 10. Run. We had Win XP at school and could only use the guest user to do work and stuff. Bias was password protected. But it had a floppy Ccat boot. So I made a bootable floppy. Copied command line winrar on it. Stole sam file from system folder. Later on at home brute forced the password for 8 hours. 
On the next day everyone could log in as an admin and install all kinds of shti. This went on for about a month until someone found out. IT techs and teachers were fking pissed. No one ratted me out though. I was kind of a hero lol. Astronomer here. I installed SETI at home on all the computers in the computer lab the week before summer break. I suspected. And was proven right when I checked my account. That they never bothered to turn the machines off for months. So hey. Might as well do citizen science. My friend and I entered into the operating system itself a virus that would essentially hunt through email accounts with edu address, so all teachers and administration, and display a picture of two women having sx. If the operator clicked, equals 10 times. A video started. If the operator clicked, 20 times the noise started. The only way to get rid of it was pretty simple. CTR. Alt. Det and use taskbar to shut it down. Not that complex obviously. Although to be honest I didn't do a lot of programming. I did some of the basics. However I mostly did the strategic planning of how we were actually going to get it done and implement it. My friend's dad was a programmer and hobbyist hacker. So he actually helped my friend design it. I still find it hilarious that his dad was willing to fck with the teachers. He must have really hated our school lol. However most teachers didn't know that. They didn't know who did it. But it was hilarious. I don't know if the new Macs did this but I remember in my elementary school we only used crappy Mac computers and I remember if you press Ctrl plus Alt plus Dell I think all at once and then H you could reverse the colors on the computer. I used to do that all the time during 3rd and 4th grade. I thought I was so cool for doing it. 